Gentleman yields back. Chair recognizes Mr. Clyde for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Comer, for letting me participate today. I greatly appreciate this opportunity. Mayor Bowser, uh, you uh, vetoed the revised Criminal Code Act passed by the D.C. City Council, correct? Correct. All right. And I assume it was because you disagreed with several of the soft on crime provisions that the D.C. Council included in the legislation. Is that correct? I, I outlined my objections. Uh, okay. And I also submitted an amendment that would address my objection to the D.C. Council. Okay, thank you. As I recall, you stated that the revised Criminal Code Act, and I quote, does not make us safer. And I have to say that I agree with you. Um, and I'm pleased that Congress passed my resolution, H.J. Res. 26, to nullify that misguided bill. And I'm grateful that with President Biden's signature, we prevented the radical RCCA from becoming law. Mayor Bowser, I noticed that you did not veto the Comprehensive Policing and Justice Reform Emergency Amendment Act but you did not sign it either, correct? That's correct. All right, so, um, um, <clears throat> so as I understand it, the police reform, and let's call it that, legislation moved forward without your signature. That's correct. All right, so why did you not sign it or veto it? I did not sign it because I knew that we would have to revisit some of the provisions with the council. Um, there are, I've been mayor eight years. I think I've vetoed eight bills. Um, so there may be in all of the legislation that has gone through and I have signed or not signed in those years, things that I agree with or things that I don't. I sometimes will leave my signature off if I know that I'm gonna have to revisit a provision with the council. Okay, well, thank you. Well, you know, I, I think that maybe uh, uh, the folks of this city um, and those of us who actually do vote um, don't find it acceptable that you don't take a stand on what a piece of legislation says. Um, you don't approve it, and you don't disapprove it. You just no, let actually, it, yeah, no, let, let me finish, no, exactly. let, let me finish. Mm -hmm. so, so earlier in this hearing, Mayor Bowser, you said that there is no greater supporter of the Metro Police Department than you. And um, <clears throat> so by not signing this bill or not vetoing it, you consider yourself the greatest supporter of the, M of the Metro Police Department. Chief Conti, would you agree with that statement, that the mayor is the greatest supporter, no greater supporter in the city than, believe, than the mayor? I've been dealing with this mayor uh, for the last uh, eight years that she's been mayor, and she is a great supporter of our law enforcement officers. Okay. <clears throat> well, I think that's a pretty low bar, Chief. Um, now... Uh, Attorney Graves, United States Attorney Graves, question for you, sir. Representative Mace said earlier, she asked the question, should communities be made aware of the crime in their neighborhood? And you said yes, affirmatively. Am I correct? Yes, we believe in All transparency. Right, great. Oh, I agree with you. All right, in uh, 2016, the Department of Justice provided Senator Grassley with, a crim with criminal prosecution data from 2010 to 2015. This is the actual letter right here. And um, it says, in response to your request for the data regarding arrests for offenses of uh, homicide, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, larceny, motor vehicle theft, and arson, we have provided the data for the D.C. Code offenses that best corresponds to your request. So will you commit here today um, to providing the prosecution statistics exactly as you did in, to Senator Grassley to this committee for the last seven years, 2016 through 2020? So I'm generally familiar with the letter, but it actually was issued at a time when I wasn't in the office. That's fine. But I can tell you what we're planning on doing is... Well, well just, just, I mean, it, you can do this, right? I mean, you have the statistics to do it. Are you willing to do it? I want to see the criminal statistics, the prosecution statistics from 2016 through 2022. Will you provide it? I understand the question. I, I want to explain what we're planning on doing. Um, so... The challenge that our office has historically faced is a lot of this data isn't readily available because of our antiquated systems. So we've had to manually pull the information. We, I have hired a data scientist so that we can more effectively do it. We are going to start monthly publishing of our prosecutorial statistics. I okay, so you will, exactly go back, you will go back to 2016 through 2022 and provide it to this committee. So we're going to do it real time going forward. Great, fantastic. Monthly. But will you do it for 2016 through 2022? That's my question to you. So... 
Yes or no is suffice. I want to see the data, and look, these are trade-offs. If we're going to go back and do this as historical analysis that we have to do by hand, I have to take people away from current prosecutions in order to do a historical analysis. I'm focused on where the numbers are because that informs me on prosecutorial strategy. It also now. tells us where you are and how successful you have been or what you decide to do or not to do when it comes to prosecutions. Will you provide this information to the committee? So, of course, we are happy to uh, look into the request if we can review the letter and see what we can pull together. Happy um, to provide happy. you a copy of the letter. Mr. Thank Chairman. you. And you will provide us the statistics. Ch Chair Gnadrick. Thank you. Gentlemen, time's back. expired, and did you feel free to answer the question? So we, of course, want to provide any information to the committee that would be helpful to it in its oversight exercises. 